Welcome back to another episode of our Eco Island Park in Planet Zoo. We're in the process of building a massive, modern, eco-friendly tropical house where Komodo dragons, Raja and Ratu, are already enjoying their new habitat. However, there's still a lot of work to be done to complete this tropical house, including building a shared habitat for the orangutans and lar gibbons. Their enclosure will be the main attraction of our building, thanks to your votes on the community wall, and I'm including incredibly excited to begin working on their habitat during this episode. So if you're curious to see how it all comes together, then be sure to stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and give the video a thumbs up if you're excited for this episode because it genuinely helps the channel. Hey everyone, my name is The Lady Designer and today we're returning to our Eco Island Park to continue our work on the huge tropical house that we began in the last episode. However, before we dive into that, there are a few other things we need to do first. First. And I'm super excited to tell you guys that we have another baby boy rat panda in here. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the little Ning, which means peaceful. And this baby boy is going to be the future of our Eco Island Park. So as soon as Milo and Lumi will pass away, we will continue breeding with this beautiful Ning rat panda baby boy. And I'm just so excited to see you in here. Oh my goodness. Okay, wait. So from super happy news we go to super sad news i had a message of pip going to die from old age and i put her up in the training center because i was like i just want to say goodbye for one last time to pip and now i try to put her back into her habitat and i already got the message like oh gosh pip is going to die from old age and i was like oh just hurry 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 but she's probably not going to die in the box right but she just did I'm just super curious what is going to happen when when she is bringing that box to the habitat. Okay, there she is. Oh no, she is really dead. Oh, oh my gosh. I oh, oh no way. I just hate this so much. Poor Pip. She died of old age in the box. Oh, that is the saddest thing ever. Oh, we're so going to miss you, Pib. It was so amazing to have you in here. And I really just do hope that your kids are not going to miss you because they didn't grow up yet. We're going to call a vet for you and make sure that we give you a nice spot to remember you. Rest in peace, Pib. So just like we did with Taz, we are going to put up a little memorial sign here for poor Pib that died in a box. I still can't get over it. Going to favor you because this should never go away. Pip, I think it was a limestone one, right? Create memorial sign. And when you press V, you can turn on a line to surface. I'm gonna put this one right underneath Taz's sign and recolor the edge. And there we have it. We have Taz died on the 6th of April, year 28, and Pip died on the 19th of October, year 36. Obviously, these years are not entirely correct because we're playing in slow mode and I had Pip in the trading center for a bit. But yeah, they will both definitely be missed. And now I can only hope that Tiggy and Angel will be doing all right because they're both still babies. And how, how much time does it take still for them to grow up? Uh, Tiggy is now 2.3 years old. So, okay, so it will take, I, I don't know, I'm guessing like another less than a year or something for them to grow up. Well, hopefully they will be all right. At least they, they still have each other. And oh my freaking goodness, from the good to the bad news, back to some good news. We have some more offspring. Darwina just gave birth to three more baby tortoises. Right over here, we have this little baby girl, Potato. And she gave birth to another baby girl. So we now have five baby girls in this habitat. And she is called Izzy. But she also did give birth to one male Galapagos giant tortoise and we will name him Tank. Thank you all so much for all the cute name suggestions. Definitely do keep them coming. Although I will give contraceptives now to Darwina and Tortuga because I think a total of eight Galapagos giant tortoises in this habitat is enough for now because it will take a long time for them to grow up. Also, we do seem to have a 
litter problem in our zoo. So I already did hire a few staff members to take care of that. So we have Susanna right over here, which you probably already did see walking with the box of Pip, and she is hopefully going to help us with this litter problem. And here on the back side of our butterfly garden, we have Charlie. And we also hired Jeff right over here. And I welcome you all to our staff team. But since we do still have a litter problem, I feel like we should hire just one more staff member. And this is going to be Porter. And hopefully these four extra caretakers are going to do the trick to get that litter problem under control. So all I want to do now is just make sure to train every one of you so you guys are going to do the best job ever. And if you want any staff member to be named after you, then definitely do make sure to give your first name in the comments down below. And who knows, I might be able to give a staff member your name as well in the future. And thank you all so much for your first name suggestions. Really do appreciate it. And I hope everyone so far is super happy to be working in our zoo. <laughs> Now looking at the negative impact right over here, you can see there are a few bins full. There's some litter here. I think there's some litter right over here. But other than that, it's okay. There's some litter right over here. It does look pretty good. So I feel like with all the staff that we just hired, I think we are able to work with this. But now that we're here in the heat maps, it might be a good idea to just double check if everything is all right. So the animal welfare is obviously good. I did not get any messages of animals not doing well. It is extremely hot in our zoo, so our guests might be complaining about thirst. And if we look at the zoo overview, yes, of course, they are thirsty, but they are always thirsty. But I'm not surprised looking at this heat map with the temperatures. But it might be a good idea to maybe just have some more drink shops in the tropical house as well. Our security and crime tab is looking pretty good if you ask me. And if we look at a crime tab in our zoo overview, there's also nothing spectacular going on. And I don't see any guests complaining about crime either. So I think that's good. Guest education coverage. I think this is looking quite nice with all the speakers and stuff underneath the ground. We have the Komodo dragons here covered as well if we quickly check at uh, the education per species because that has been something we haven't checked for a while and select the average contribution to a guest's overall education level yes i do know this is not going to be 100 like this is the total amount of guests and then divide it in percentage of how much education they got per species, but it does tell me something about what we could improve. So for example, the Komodo dragons, like it's very far away. So I think that's not going to climb up a lot unless we have more animals in this area. But what we don't have is an animal talk which is something I do want to arrange right now. Uh, you will notice that I have a 3D gizmo turned on right now, and that is because I still have Planet Zoo Plus installed from the modding videos that I recorded with Leaf. So if you haven't seen those yet, I highly recommend you to. We did not cover Planet Zoo Plus yet on the channel, but we will do so. Do stay tuned for that. But this will give you the ability to hide these underneath the ground if you don't like the look of them and they will still work. So that's just perfect. But for now, I'm not going to hide them because I'm not sure yet if this is the spot where it's going to stay. And we're going to add it into the work roster. Now, while I say that, I do realize that the work roster might not be the best spot to add it in because there's not a straight connection to this area. So I think I'm just going to create a new work roster, adding the animal talk in here. And is there a staff building nearby? No, I do not think so. Do we have money for it? Yes, we do. So let's just add a staff room in this area. So just for temporary purposes, but this is also going to help the staff that is in this area to clean and stuff. So it doesn't seem a bad idea to have a staff building somewhere in this area later on. I'm gonna call the work roster just Tropical House, name the animal talk, Komodo dragons, and then hire an educator that will be dedicated to the Komodo dragons. 
And this is going to be Sammy. Welcome to your staff team. Okay, so the guest happiness. This is hilarious. We have someone complaining about the price. That's so unfair. Toilet block one is extortionate. So people do complain about the prices of the toilet. I did raise this to 150. So I think I'm just going to lower it to one because if this is going to cost people to be super unhappy, that's definitely not what we want. Toilet block one costs that much. That's disgusting. I can't believe leave toilet block 2 cost that much okay yeah <laughs> Guys, do not raise your prices this high. People will get unhappy about that. Guest energy. Oh, that is looking very nice for a zoo that is so spacious. So I did put down a lot of benches to help them with that. That's perfect. Guest hunger. These guests are all around some shops. And these guests could go to this restaurant right over here. I think that's not bad. Okay, yeah. There's that. Do we know? But still, these guests right over here are pretty close to these shops. Ah, there are a lot of people very thirsty here. So I think that's really due to the heat. But for now, I just don't feel like putting back the shops that we just moved here to the restaurant. Guests here at the end are also thirsty. So maybe we should add some shops right over here in the future. And yeah, as I said, we definitely need to add a few here in the tropical house people complaining about toilets that is definitely also a thing we have a toilet here we have a toilet right over here and we have a toilet right over here so yeah maybe in a few oh we actually have a toilet right over here as well so we have two toilets in this corner but we should probably just add one over here in the future as well maybe one over here one over here yeah i think that's all good and education. Now, these guests are not that well educated, but I do wonder how long are they here in the zoo? We can see what animals they did visit, can we? They want to see Komodo dragon, Chavalski's hose. I didn't see it yet. Arrival date, year 37. Yeah, okay, so these guests just arrived. Oh, I actually didn't know you could also see the adopted animal in places they did visit. And what about this guest? Wow, okay, that's a long list, but you did see many animals and thus you are educated. So I think most of these people that are red, they just arrived at our zoo. So they will be educated once they stay longer and visit more animals. So now I just quickly want to check on Raja and Ratu because these Komodo dragons are just so fantastic. Every time I see a Komodo dragon, also in real life in videos and stuff, I am just so amazed by these guys. And did you know they have like this venomous bite? So these dragons have like a unique way of catching their prey. Their mouth are like a bacteria filled weapon. So when they bite an animal, the bacteria in their mouth can make the prey really sick. So they don't have to chase their prey for a long time they just bite it and then wait for it to get weak and slow and then eat the animal oh my gosh i really don't want to see these guys in real life i i just rather keep it on videos and stuff <laughs> But they're just so fascinating, aren't they? So in quarantine right now, we have two Bornean orangutans waiting, Louis and Daisy. Louis is a young male Bornean orangutan who was rescued from the forest of Malaysia. His story began when he was separated from his mom due to illegal logging activities. He was found alone and in need of help as he struggled to survive, but luckily wildlife protectors discovered him and assured his safety. And due to this challenging start in life, Louis is very strong-willed and eager to explore and he is known for his intelligence and problem-solving abilities, always curious about his surroundings. And then right over here we have Daisy who is a female born in orangutan from Indonesia and her early life was marred by a very sad chapter as she was kept as a pet in a let's say less than ideal conditions but thank god Daisy was rescued by authorities and was first brought to a rehabilitation center to learn how to be a happy the orangutan again before she was brought here to enjoy the rest of her life. She is a very gentle and shy orangutan due to her history, but she appreciates the care and freedom she has now and will hopefully enjoy her stay at our Eagle Island Park. Now, the Borneo orangutan population has declined by 60% in the last 60 years, with their numbers expected to have halved again by 2025. The main threat to orangutans is habitat loss and fragmentation caused by deforestation, but they are also hunted for bushmeat and climate change is causing their natural habitat to change. Conservation efforts are being made by assigning areas of forest as protected, but these protected areas are small and need to be expanded to cover more land. Now, unfortunately, we 
can't really do much about the amount of space that they have in a while with their eco island park, but hopefully we are able to raise their population in the wild at least because the expectancy of their population being half as much in only two years, that is just crazy. So it's really important to save these beautiful animals in the wild. And as you can already tell, the orangutans won't be alone. They will be mixed with the lar gibbon. So Yang is a young male gibbon who was saved from Thailand where his life was at risk due to habitat loss and illegal wildlife trade. So he was rescued by dedicated conservationists because else he would have probably not survived. He's a very playful and energetic gibbon and he enjoys swinging through the trees and climbing frames and is known for his acrobatic skills. So that's going to be very exciting. And then right over here we have Jin, a female lar gibbon who was rescued in China, where she narrowly escaped a very tragic fate. She was hunted down by poachers for her meat, caught in a heartbreaking trade that was threatening her life, but fortunately she was saved just in time by authorities who were warned about this trade. So Jin is a very gentle but vocal gibbon who is still recovering slowly from this traumatic past. But she sings in the morning not only to mark her territory but also as a testament to her survival. Hopefully we are able to give her a happy home in her eco island park and I do really hope she will get along well with Yang, that will be so amazing. So the Largamas are endangered primarily due to habitat loss through deforestation for agriculture development. However, they are also hunted for their meat and for illegal pet trade. So many areas in their native range have been designated as protected conservation zones to combat these issues. So right now their population in the wild is 15,000 to 20,000. And hopefully with our breeding efforts on our Eco Island Park, we are able to help that population in the wild to go up. So now that all animals are properly introduced, it's obviously time to start building a habitat for them. And oh my goodness, this was such a bigger struggle than I thought in like so many ways. So I first thought I wanted to add an edge of water all the way around the habitat. But when I added the water at some point, I did realize that the terrain of the habitat would be reduced way too much, which is obviously going to be a problem with these animals. Now the thing is, with an open space like this, which is also pretty high, is that everything should feel more in proportion. So having a small and low climbing frame, for example, in the middle wouldn't make that much sense and would feel a little bit weird from the upper layer of the path. But also having only a high climbing frame would probably feel weird as well and too small. So in the end, I had to go and play around with more rocks and stuff in the middle with a climbing frame all the way around it. But before I started working on the middle area, I wanted to make sure that we had some some nice fences for the path of the lower layer. Now this was also quite a struggle because I want to give this more of like a thick and heavy look, but we also want to avoid running in too much trouble of like the viewing inside of the habitat from the path. Now I will get back to the viewing inside of the habitat later on during this speed build, but it did feel like I wanted to do something with the aquatic rocks here, even though I really wasn't sure yet how this would look. So we are using again a lot of the mud pillar type technique in this habitat, so we are sure that everything will be aligned nicely around the edges. Now I do say that, but it actually did turn out that the pad that I added, which you can't exactly place down with the mod pitter, were not that well aligned. So at some point where I added the fences, it did turn out that the other side of the path were like visible, the curves were sticking through and stuff. So I had to be a little bit more creative here. So after I placed the metal fences, which are mostly there for safety measures, you do see me place down the aquatic blocks first, which will be the edge of the path. And then on the inner circle, there will be a little patch of mulch. I'm not exactly sure what happened here with the recording, but when I noticed the path were sticking out at one side and things were not as aligned as I wanted to, and you saw the curb sticking out of the mulch and stuff, I decided to put the aquatic block a little bit higher and then change the angle of the mulch a little bit. So this way you would not see any path 
math curve sticking out through it, as they will still be covered underneath the mulch. The only thing that I still need to do is add an edge of like curbs or barriers to make sure the guests will not be walking through the fences here. But for some reason, I just didn't feel like redoing the path. Like everything is connected so nicely and I don't want to waste too much time on that. So in order to get a better idea how much space and terrain I have for the animals, I added this green plant wall all the way around the bottom layer. Now you will barely see this wall later on. So that is all duplicated all the way around the habitat is totally fine if you ask me. And after that, I started to draw out the area where I wanted some kind of cave or shelter to be in the middle of the habitat. So this will be in between two round plastic layers. And after that, I placed them. I did cover both plastic layers with aquatic rocks to make it all look more natural, of course. And then I started working on the rock work. Now, this as well was quite a challenge because I had to make sure rocks were not sticking through the shelter. And at this point when building, I still didn't exactly know how I wanted things to look. So mostly when I don't have that much inspiration, I just start working on something. And then mostly when I am building, some ideas pop up in my head of how I could make things work or how I could make things look. But the rock placement went so slow at this point, mostly because of the lack of inspiration here. So I did decide to start working a bit on the edge of the sloped path that brings people from the upper layer to the lower layer. Like this also took quite some time because you have to move every piece of rock like one by one to make it all align nicely with the sloped path. So oh my goodness, I lost so much time on this path as well. So when I had all these rocks in place, I started working on the fencing. Like after I placed some rocks in the middle, I did realize that whenever I would be adding climbing frames here, realistically the orangutan and Gibbons would probably be able to escape here. Like just simply jumping from the climbing frames onto that slowed path. So that gave me the idea to close it off on the side with some chain link fences. Also something I would not recommend doing on the edge of a slow path like this. <laughs> It all is taking so much time to make it look nice and to get every rock and every beam in the right angle. But I am really happy with the end result, so I guess it was kind of worth it. Now on a nice eye level of the gas at the upper layer, I created a round platform with the climbing wood. So this will be a bit of a focal point of the upper layer of the mountain of rocks we are going to create on the middle of the habitat. But before I close everything off with rocks, I wanted to make sure I had enough climbing beams around the mountain that will eventually lead to the upper layer of the mountain. So I decided here to go for round beams as well and then just hope the orangutans will be able to show off their brachiation later on when using these beams. And newsflash, I did run a little test and it does seem like the orangutans are able to use it and, and show some brachiation animations. So that's just amazing. So I first started with four layers of round beams slightly in an angle and connected to each other. But later on, I will remove one because it just became a little bit too much in the end. But then it was time to start adding a lot of rocks again to fill up the middle area. And at this point, I did think it would be nice to also add a waterfall that will be integrated into the mountain as well. Like I really do like how simple it was to integrate this on one side of the mountain. And at the bottom, we will be creating a little water body still, but not entirely sure yet if we will leave it open. Like I did add a water pipe on top of the mountain because I do remember from many of the earlier habitats we made for monkeys and primates that they not always climb just for fun to the top of your climbing frame. So if needed, we are able to just simply close the water body in the habitat so the animals will have to climb up on top of the mountain if they are thirsty. Now one thing I really don't like that much in buildings like this is the lighting. Like I had a lot of temporary lights in the end to make it all a little bit brighter, but I don't know yet how, but I definitely want to improve prove that a little bit later on. But anyways, it's just a little side note here because at this point, I still wasn't super happy with the shape of the mountain and the climbing frame. So I decided to play around a little bit with trees. Now there were not that many tropical trees from Asia to use that like the orangutans prefer. So I did end up using a lot of the tamarind trees, which also have some very beautiful flowers in them, which I absolutely love for the nice color and contrast that they give. But also the branches of this tree do 
work super well to make this whole mountain feel more overgrown and stuff. It's really like playing around a lot with the smaller sized trees here, but in the end, I'm super happy how this has turned out. Even though I would have loved to have a little bit more variation in trees here, like I don't really think there is any other tree in game that comes close to this tree and like the size and the shape of it. And this was also in the end the moment where I thought it would be a really nice idea to cover more of the bottom of the habitat with these trees to give the guests more of a feeling they are looking inside of this habitat from above, so from both levels of the path. And like I said earlier, with a space like this, I do feel like you need to keep paying attention to the proportions of the habitat and how you fill it in. So it all should not be too much, but also not too few foliage work. So this is when I decided to also add a few smaller tamarind trees around the fences so it all would come together a lot more nicely in the end. And to cover the rest of the mountain, we will play a lot around with the roots and some smaller tropical plants and some of the silver ferns. Like I don't think the mountain and decorations are perfect at this point, but I am quite happy with how everything has turned out in the end. Now clearly, as you will be able to tell from this speed build, I did not work yet on the outside of the buildings and then the outer walls, so everything will still be open around the habitat, and that is mainly due to the fact I still haven't made up my mind yet how I want to fill it all up and how I want the building on the outside to look, how many windows I want to add and stuff, and also underneath that path that is like leading the guests from the upper layer to the lower layer. I wanted to fill it up maybe with some shops and stuff, but it was giving me so many errors when I wanted to place down some counters. And at the moment, I'm still not entirely sure if I want to close it off here, as the chain link fences that I added do give some kind of nice touch in this area. So I don't know, maybe I will use a Planet Zoo Plus mod to be able to add some counters here if I still want to add some, some shops here. I, I think we should, because we really do need to have some space here, and this is pretty much a waste of space now so it will be just perfect to have a few shops here underneath that path and to close it off nicely or maybe just add some tropical foliage here and there. I think that could also work. I don't know yet. We have to wait and see about that. So yeah, still a lot of things super uncertain here how I want to decorate the whole area around the habitat but progress have been made and I think it's about time to add Louie and Daisy and Ying and Yang to their habitat and see how this will go. So ladies and gentlemen, Gentlemen, right over here we have Louis, the Bornean orangutan, and as you can tell, this backstage area. <sighs> It's not perfect, but when I sent these animals to this this area, I realized like, oh my goodness, no, this was one big dark hole of terrain. It was just hideous. And I was like, no, like you really cannot show these animals in here like that. So it's it's pretty barren. We need to add some climbing frames and stuff right over here. Want to avoid having some hay beddings because I actually don't want these animals to be here and enjoy this area. I want them to be in that main habitat that they have on this side. But welcome, Louis. Oh my goodness, you are so amazing. I do hope we will see you a little bit later on. So I did finish this backstage area for the Amur Leopard, which is, we're like right above this habitat here in the corner. And we also have like this, it's, it's just for decorational purposes, just to give the idea that there is a little backstage area for some stuff and stuff, for some stuff and stuff. Yes, for some stuff and stuff. <laughs> So th yeah, this was basically how it was looking. So this is still something we need to work on. I will show the Komodo dragons later on. Hello, Daisy. Oh, I hope you are enjoying your habitat in here. Oh my goodness. I do hope we are able to see some breakation in here in the climbing frames. That would be just so amazing. But okay, enough talking. Let's just go and show this habitat. We have Yang right over here. Hello, gorgeous. I hope you are enjoying your habitat as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love their audio so much. So yeah, also these lights, I'm not entirely sure if I will keep them, but everything was just so freaking dark. Oh yeah, okay, they are able to climb in trees and do weird things. I might 
need to turn that off and just make sure that they're only going to use these climbing frames. Oh, look, Yin is here as well. Oh, it's it's really hard to see you. Yeah, okay, we might need to turn off some climbing here, but they are able, let me just go a little bit to this layer. So yeah, I, I did not do this, this yet, but we will get there, guys. Oh, we need to actually change the signs real quick here because obviously we want to have the right education for our guests in here. So we're going to change it to orangutans and largibans, every other sign. So let me just quickly show the habitat, a mixed habitat of the orangutans and the largibans. As you can tell, we did not decorate the upper layer just yet. What we will do, this will all blend in a lot better, but it already looks super nice, especially like using this space around here like it's pretty high so I really try to not make it all feel useless and it also works super well with this eye level so the guests really have a reason and they already do to just walk around here and enjoy the view of this habitat we have a beautiful waterfall right over here some nice climbing frames and the animals are also able to use all these trees right over here most of the other trees are turned off when it comes down to climbing just to make sure that eh, some some animations will probably look super wonky and stuff and also I want to avoid that they're able to to escape from the habitat but yeah this already starts to look super nice for this tropical house if you ask me so let's just go uh, to this path right over here and follow it down we have chain link fences here to make sure that the animals are not able to escape or like jump from the climbing frames onto this path and we have a little area right over here with some hay beddings and yeah well you can tell there is a climbing frame going all the way around here and if we're lucky we will see Louie or Daisy the orangutans using this to to brachiate I think you call it that way around these climbing frames so that will be just fantastic they are able to do that so hopefully we are lucky enough to see that later on so if we go down here the guests can obviously follow the animals if they want one, two, all the way down, ooh, down here, and then walk around this level. And I wanted to make sure that the guests that do not have like a super clear vision here onto the, the, the layer, uh, how do you say that? This layer. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it works super well. So this particular water section, we could potentially close off if the animals are not going up too often. And we did close this off now as well, just to see if the animals are going to use the climbing frames more often, because that will be just so amazing. I love this viewing, by the way. It looks so good. So we will continue right over here. There is the spot where the animals are able to climb up here onto the climbing frames that are going all the way around the mountain and we have like these these walkthroughs right over here underneath some branches and it's all very lush and and oh, yeah I'm super happy with how this has turned out like it looks so cool and especially when the animals just walk here right in front of the waterfall it just looks so fantastic so hopefully we are able to see that right over here so where are the animals okay oh look 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 there goes Yang right in front of the waterfall doesn't that look amazing Oh, oh, okay. Well, I had to turn off a few of the climbing beams here because it looks super wonky, but that jump actually looked super good. So I'm super happy to see that. So now, oh, you are going to straight forward. This is exactly what I wanted to have. That's just perfect. And then you jump uh, on top of that tree and then you jump. Okay, yeah, well, you could already, you could also have used these beams here, but I guess it's all right. <laughs> Are you going to use that? That would be so amazing. I think you are. <laughs> Look at their little feet. He's so happy. Oh, that was so amazing. Okay, let's go and check out the other animals. So we have Yin right over here, also enjoying the climbing frames right now, going to the upper layer. Oh man, this is this is looking really cool. I am curious if they're able to hang around here though. I'm not sure if they are able to do that when there is like this. Oh, 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 you're going all the way up. Where are you going? <laughs> Look at those little wobbly hands. Oh, this is so funny. 
But yeah, I, I'm not sure if they're able to hang or, or anything. I do hope they are able to, but we have to wait and see about that. Just like the orangutans, like the animals, you, you can't really force them to climb and, and do some tricks here. So we, we have to be lucky. But you are at least going to use the water pipe here. So it does look like it is working that we closed off this water body. But I still have not seen any orangutans, so we need to check on them. So I moved Louie up. Oh, you can see here that I also added a webcam. I moved him up because for some reason the orangutans were just simply not doing anything. But it does look like you are also going to play with the keyboard. <laughs> I love it that they do have a different animation. <laughs> it's so He's like super serious and Yang was like, Oh yeah, just play with my feet. It's so funny. Just look at how fantastic this is looking. Oh man, I can't get over it. This is so good. But unfortunately, he did not do any brigation or anything like that. No hanging, no playing. So right over here, we do have Daisy. And I'm not entirely sure if she will show some brigade. Oh my gosh, Yin. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're all so happy with their keyboard. I love it. But it doesn't look like... Daisy is going to show us some vacation, is she? Oh, I thought she was having some some second thoughts here. Like, hey, sh shall I? Shall I not? But no, no, she is just going to climb down, chill and relaxed. So like I said, I also did do a little bit here of the Komodo dragon, a little backstage area for, yeah, some decorational purposes. And uh, right over here, it's pretty simple, but you can tell how much some plaster walls can do already. This, this should obviously be a gate that you can close off and this would be like the line for like yeah stand here then you won't be uh, in danger or anything like that obviously it's not working but also the komodo dragons needed so much space here to walk through which annoyed me so much but it is what it is i guess so yeah it's it's simple it's it's very plain i don't really think that the guests are super happy that the komodo dragons are all down here what do we have wait what Offspring due to April 41. You're kidding me. That's next year already. That's in less than a year. We're getting some offspring. Oh, that is freaking amazing. You guys, if you have any name suggestions for the Komodo Dragon offspring, do let me know in the comments down below. Oh, I'm so happy with that. Oh my goodness. I was just about to say, like, it's just not going to happen that we're going to see any hanging or, or playing animations of these animals during this episode, hopefully in the next one. But here you go. Yin is at least hanging, which is already making me super happy. It, it's not looking perfect with these thick beams on uh, above her but it's just amazing to see i do hear her as well i mean oh man i just love the noises of these little arguments so yeah do let me know in the comments down below what you guys all think of this orangutan and lar given habitat and also let me know what you think of the backstage area so far they're not completely finished yet of course but i think this already does look a lot better let me know some name suggestions for the komodo dragon offspring but also of course for the orangutan and Lar Givens in the comments down below. Leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Uh, yeah, I just really do hope to see you guys all in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, guys!